Hi, this lesson is on how to find least common multiples, also known as LCM. We're going to be working on the part where we're going to find the least common multiple of two whole numbers less than or equal to 12. Before we begin, make sure you have your needed supplies of your composition notebook, your lined post-it notes, and a sharpened pencil. So the first example I want you guys to watch, we're going to find the LCM of 4 and 5. As discussed in class today, um, we're going to go ahead and list the number 4, and we want to list the first several multiples of 4. Now when we're talking about multiples, we're talking about um, all the numbers that come after 4 as if we're skip counting. So if we think about what 4 times 1 would be, we would say 4. 4 times 2 is 8. 4 times 3 gives us 12, so we're skip counting by 4s. 4, 8, 12, the next one would be 16, and then 20. Now we're going to do the same thing with 5. So we're going to go ahead and list the fact, the multiples of 5. We've got 5, 10, 15, 20, and we're going to stop there. Now as soon as we found a number that they had in common, this is our least common multiple. The smallest number that you came across that they had in common is known as your LCM or also your least common multiple. And you can stop right there from this one here. Now our next one is where you're going to have to write this down. So I want you to turn to the next available page in your composition notebook. We're going to start by writing the title on the top of your paper. So please write least common multiple and in parentheses LCM. We're going to go ahead and list how to find the LCM. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to, number one, list the multiples for each number. Step two, we're going to find the smallest number in common. Sorry, there it is again. Now remember, you may need to pause your video to get all this written down. I'm going to show you another strategy on how to find LCM. So I would like for you guys to put your pencils down and watch and listen. In this strategy, I'm going to show you how to find the least common multiple of 12 and 16 using the ladder method. We're going to begin by writing both numbers down. Side by side like I did here. And then I'm going to go ahead and put this L-shaped thing here, L for ladder, you can think of it like that. And what I want to find first is the smallest common prime number that these guys have in common between the 12 and the 16. So we don't want to use 1 because 1 doesn't do anything for our numbers. So start with 2. Since 2 goes both into 12 and to 16, I'm going to list my 2 over here on the left side. So now I'm going to ask myself, 2 goes into 12 six times, or how many times, and I say six times, so I write the six directly underneath the 12, and I'm going to do the same thing over here, where I'll say, well, 12 goes into 16, how many times? Eight. So now I'm going to do this again. I'm going to go ahead and draw my ladder again, and I'm going to start again from the beginning. Find the smallest prime factor that goes both into six and eight. Two is that number again. So I'm going to once again write the 2 on the left side. So I'm going to ask myself, how many times does 2 go into 6? That answer is 3. So I'm going to list the 3 here. And then I'm going to ask myself, well, how many times does 2 go into 8? That answer is 4. So I'm going to list the 4 there. So now we're basically done with listing numbers. You're probably thinking, but Ms. Paluka, the 4 isn't a prime number. You're right, it isn't, but we don't need to worry about that part because if you look at the 3 and the 4, they share no common numbers at all. So we're, we've got it, we're done. So now what we're going to do is we're going to look at the L shape that this has formed. So with this L shape, what I'm talking about is this right here that I'm going to emphasize. Oh, that's kind of dark, so I'm going to redo it in a different color in case you can't see that on your screens. So this basically forms an L shape here. So you take what's inside the L, so these are all the outside numbers that we have left off, and we're going to multiply them together. So we've got a 2, another 2, 
a 3, and a 4. So when we multiply these guys together, let's start with 2 times 2, we get 4, times 3 is going to give us 12, and then 12 times 4 is going to give us 48. So the LCM for the numbers 12 and 16 will be 48. So now we're going to try it. So in your composition notebook on your next available lines, we're going to try to use the latter method to find the LCM of 6 and 8. So begin by listing 6 and 8 side by side. And then go ahead and draw your ladder underneath. So start with finding the smallest number that they have in common that's prime, and that number happens to be a 2. So ask yourself, well, 2 goes into 6, how many times? That answer is 3. Then ask yourself, well, 2 goes into 8, how many times? That answer happens to be 4. Now your two new numbers are 3 and 4, so we're looking at these numbers right over here. Well, they have nothing in common other than the prime factor 1. So you're basically done with this part. So what you're going to do now is you're going to take your L-shaped numbers here in the L, so which is all your outside numbers, and you're going to multiply them together. So you have a 2 times a 3 times a 4. 2 times 3 gives you 6, and then if you take 6 times 4, you're going to end up getting 24. So your LCM for this problem is 24. Now some people call this method the upside down birthday cake method. So if you're more familiar with it known as the upside down birthday cake method versus the ladder method, then it really means the same thing. I'm going to show you one more strategy on how you can find the LCM, which is least common multiple, of 4 and 10 using prime factor trees. So we're going to begin by listing the numbers 4 and 10. So I'm going to start with the 4, and I'm going to write um, the, what two numbers I would multiply to give me 4, and I would get 2 times 2. So 2's are already prime. There's nothing further I can go with that one. So now I'm going to go to the 10. Two factors are 2 and 5. So right now, this is as far as I can get with these problems. I'm going to go ahead and beneath these problems, I'm going to give in list format the 4 and the 10, and I'm going to write the factors for each of them. So for example, under 4, I'm going to write 2 times 2, because I got that 2 times 2 from this part right over here. And underneath or next to the 10, I'm going to list the factors that I found by using prime factor trees, which was, five, or two, which was 2 times 5. All right, so now here's where it could get tricky. So what we're going to do is you see how right here that I just put a box around, those twos line up together, so they kind of, they're common, they're a pair. So you've got one in each, num one in each row. You've got one in the four column and one in the ten. So we're going to write that two down. We just write it once. The other numbers that um, don't pair up are this two right over here and this five right over there. So I'm going to list each of those numbers down just once. So now the reason why I only wrote the first two only one time, it's because these guys paired up over here, so they only count as one. But then I had the two, which was this two right over here, that didn't match up with anything, and the five that didn't match with, up with anything. So now I'm going to multiply what I see over in this area here. Two times two gives me four, times five gives me 20. So the LCM for this example is 20. All right, so here's your post-it note assignment. On a post-it note, I would like for you to find me the LCM of 3 and 9. You can use any method you want. However, you have to write something down. I know a lot of you could look at this and tell me what the answer is right away, but you have to show me either the list method, the ladder method, or the factor, the prime factorization tree method. All right, guys, that's it, and we'll see you back in class later.